The roll call, Ms. D'Angelo. Russell. Here. Mr. Boyer. Here. Ms. Gatuli. Here. Mrs. Davidson. Here. And Mrs. Hill. Hill. Here. Okay. This is, um, uh, we're in open session and we always start our public meetings with the Pledge of Allegiance. I think this is Dr. Nguyen's meeting, so I'd like her to lead us in our Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, appreciate it. Um, everybody here is a special guest, so I'm not going to introduce us all. And this is the point in our meeting where we can have public input, we can have community and staff participation. I have no cards, so um, we are just gonna go ahead and start with the meeting. And I think I'm going to turn this over to uh, Dr. Nguyen, or to Dr. Pulver, Nguyen, okay. Yes, thank you very much. Um, today we have our team from Keenan here to help us uh, regarding the pension investment that we have been um, talking about for the last month or so. And Jeffrey uh, is here from Keenan. We also have Carrie and Scott. Carrie is from Morgan Stanley, and Scott is from the uh, Benefits Trust that will be overseeing that, that, that trust as well. So I'm just, gonna give just to clarify, we've actually been studying this for over a year. Two years. Uh, yeah. We've okay. had two board workshops within the last couple of months. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank. It's been over like two years since our 2018 when we started talking about this pension, and then, um, but this is the, the board has really actively in the last month or so. Thank you, yeah. Jeffrey. Yes. Um, good evening, Madam President, board members, Dr. Pulver, Nancy, and, and cabinet. Uh, we do appreciate uh, you bringing us here tonight to kind of finalize the discussion around what this program will look like, um, the horizon invest or the investment horizon, as well as choices around our different portfolios uh, that we have available. So who we have on the call today is we have Scott Rankin from Benefit Trust Company. He again administers the trust uh, in conjunction with Carrie Allison, who's from Morgan Stanley, uh, who is our registered investment advisor and advises as to the different investments within the portfolios, uh, the six portfolios that we have within our trust. Um, so our goal today is to speak to the group and really come to um, a determination as to what dollar amounts and, and how quickly you would like to get uh, those monies into the market and into what portfolio that would be. Um, so with that, I thought it would be easiest for us as a group to break this discussion into two different, um, I guess, sections. The first is gonna be the horizon. So how quickly and in what amounts uh, does it make sense to invest the current funds that you have? And then secondly, we'll talk a little bit about the different portfolio options you have and where maybe the best destination uh, for these funds would be. So with that, um, I am gonna hand it over to Carrie uh, to talk to the group um, very specifically about about two recommendations he would have for the group on how to invest uh, the $15 million uh, that the group does have available. Um, so Carrie, with that. Thank you, Jeffrey. Can you all hear me okay? Yes. 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 Thank you. Great. Uh, Nancy, could you put up that page for statistics here so I could just give the folks some, just a very brief background. And we have that. Right. We have yeah, we copies have at our desk also. Okay, if you scroll down to the bottom of this where it says statistics, and, and but actually just to put this in context, uh, Jeffrey and I and Scott have been talking to Nancy for a couple of years, but she had this premonition that we were gonna have a large market correction. So she was just <laughs> waiting for a good time to get in the market. <laughs> Well done, Nancy, well done. <laughs> yeah. So one of the things we talked about is ultimately the first decision is which portfolio best fits your needs longer term. And we kind of talked about the moderate growth portfolio um, simply because a moderate growth portfolio, which is roughly 50-50, um, <laughs> there's kind of a reason a lot of money is invested 50-50, is because the risk reward is kind of the most efficient. So if you look at 
the worst three-year rolling period there and see what the 3.73 number, mm -hmm. which is just above the 7.3 and the 18.8. Yep. Basically what that means is we've looked at all our portfolios back to the beginning of 08. Uh, and we've said, and this includes 08, which was one of the worst years ever, and 09, which was one of the best years ever. And we've said, which, how did these portfolios do? What was the worst three-year return ever? What was the average three-year return? And what's the best three-year return? And then we did that over a one-year period and also over a five-year period. And what we found is if you look at the three-year and even the five-year period, the moderate growth portfolio always has the best case scenario of the bad scenarios. It does best in down markets over a three to five-year period. That's why we kind of were um, focused on that one, which is roughly our 50-50 portfolio. Um, so then the second question was, is how soon do you want to get this money invested? And we were talking to Nancy about two specific proposals. One is get half the money invested now and then dollar cost average the remainder into the port into this portfolio over a three month period. Second option is invest half the portfolio into the moderate growth right now, like as in like next week or as soon as possible and then put the other half immediately in our fixed income portfolio, which is 100% bonds, Could I, and then I ask a move now? that one into the moderate growth over the next six months. Nancy. I, I have a question. Uh, when you look at the, mo uh, the moderate growth uh, portfolio, uh, that says it is... Um, 45% equity and 55% fixed income. Is that is that not correct? That is correct. Okay, but then when you talk about the options and you look at option one as an example, that I think makes sense to me. The other one though, then you're gonna go into a fixed income portfolio 50%, while the moderate growth already has a lot of fixed income in it. So then we're gonna be pretty deep into fixed income with that option. Okay, that's a great question. And let me tell you why I talked about this. Well, number one is you could just put it all in right now into the moderate growth. Most clients just don't do that. They like to move it in uh, over a multiple month period. If you did move the remaining 50% into the moderate growth over say a three to six month period, that would mean the balance is staying at the county treasury earning what, Nancy, a percent, something like that, maybe? And, and this is where I wanted to give you some insights of what's going on in the bond market. Um, we had this terrible illiquidity about three weeks ago where everyone was just rushing, selling everything, bonds, gold, stocks, everything to get to cash. Well, over the last few weeks, the federal government has come in and to to um, basically buy treasuries, agencies, mortgage, even corporate bonds, even municipal bonds, really with no limit in sight. And what we've seen is the bond market rallied dramatically the last week and a half. So my point in saying that if you don't wanna put all the money into the moderate growth right now, which I agree with, put the balance in fixed income because there's so much support in the fixed income market, I really don't see a downside to it. Um, because of what the federal government is doing. And then move it over three months? And then would you move? Would that recommendation mean you would still dollar cost average every month to remain move the remaining 50% in the conservative one into the moderate growth? Or would you just still plan it there? No, no, we'd move it and it'd be fixed income, not conservative. So we put half in the in the fixed income, sorry if I spoke incorrectly, and then move that half into the moderate growth over a six month period. That, so what that could look like correct. is okay. maybe yeah. you have seven and a half million that goes in the end of March in the in, in both of the portfolios, and then April, April, May, June, July, August, and September, you move the balance of the fixed income to the moderate growth. And, and the only idea with that is that 
Excuse me. Fixed income. Yeah, go ahead, Nancy. So I th to summarize that, why you're making that recommendation is that the interest or the lack thereof of interest that we're getting at the county, um, you feel that we can get some growth, although, although very conservative, but we can get some growth in the fixed income and not continue to lose at the same rate that we're sitting at it with the county. Is that correct? Because I think that Nancy- That is exactly right. Okay. That is exactly right. I Nancy feel like also, we could easily get, you know, three, four, five, six percent on the fixed income because but, of what the government is doing in that market. Okay, because Nancy had also said that she felt or she saw that at the county, the interest rate was also going to go down and drop. Yeah. Hello? Yep. Okay. The assumption at second interim was at 2% uh, interest rate for current year and moving forward to the um, out years. Based on what we're seeing right now, the interest rate will probably drop pretty significant, probably below 1% pretty quickly, I would think, based on what we have seen. So by parking our money in the county treasurer is basically not going to be generating any interest. So I think what Kerry is saying is that if we even put it in the fixed income, we'll get a better rate of return than sitting at a county treasurer at this point. We can double check with the county to see, but the last publication they gave us was still at 2%, which I don't think is probably going to materialize at this point. So given that everything else has um, dropped fairly quickly. Okay, we have another uh, question from our board member, um, okay, Mrs. Carrie Davidson. Iman. I'm the new board member, so if my question seems silly, I'm, I'm learning. So the, if the fixed one, if your option two is over a six month period or put into the fixed bond, no. um, that, that's wrong? Is it put, it's put into the fixed? It was 50% to moderate growth yeah. and 50% to fixed okay. income, and then within six months, start, it will I mean, move to the we'll other. Move, mm -hmm. So the balance of, we'll move, um, you know, 20% of the fixed income or whatever percent each month, we'll move it over to the moderate growth. Moderate. So it's that you are putting it in an account that will make some money um, better than what we're doing now, but you'll take us, you'll go at a slower pace than the three month investment for the second half? Is that what it he is? He said to yeah. move a six months, so basically doing the dollar cost averaging. So at least it's very safe. At least half of our money is in a, in a fixed income account making at least, you know, I think Carrie, you said about 6%, maybe five to 6% mm -hmm. versus mm -hmm. sitting in a county treasurer, will, which will probably be below 1% at some point. But so with, we the, haven't, with the first option, we would just do that more quickly. He would you, be putting it into the moderate account over a three-month period, the second. I think the be, difference is three months or six months. Yes, okay, yes. that's what I'm asking. Okay. So option one was, and, and um, Carrie, do you want to maybe repeat that again? So I think option one was put 50% of the, 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 uh, um, the $15.5 million into the moderate growth, and then within three months, put the balance of the 50%. So but within three months, 100% of our money will be in the moderate growth. The second option would be to put 50% in the moderate growth and a 50% in the fixed income. And within six months period, we will move monthly from fixed income into the growth, uh, into the moderate growth, and then within six months, everything will be in the mo moderate growth option. So the question is, why would you do one for in, in, within a three month and in option two, spread it out over into six months? Thank you. Did you hear that question? I did. I did. And you could you could also do it over three months. I guess my thinking was is that you you're actually going to generate some pretty good returns in the fixed income. So okay. the moderate growth is half fixed income, half equities. Fixed income obviously is 100 percent. So since you've already got some in fixed income already, I thought, well, then maybe that could allow you to uh, a little more time to move it into the market. Okay. But if you wanted to do it in three months, that'd be fine. I think, though, the key is, is we want to have it all invested before the fourth quarter, because we think fourth quarter GDP is going to be much better. Okay. We have another question for our, our board member. Mr. Uh, uh, Boyer. Carrie, um, just a question. Um, I, if we put, uh, which I like option two, putting 50% in the fixed income and putting 50% in the um, moderate growth portfolio, that really means when we start that with 22.5% of our, of our total 15 million is in the, in, this, in the market 
and that 78% or whatever, 77.5% is there. I'm, I'm just concerned right now because we don't know. I, I think that's where we want to start. Could we, would it not be wise since we're walking now and now we're running to, to, to two years to get to this point, <laughs> to maybe think about uh, dollar cost averaging over a longer period of time? Because I know we want to get in the market maybe by September, but I think there's so many unknowns right now that a three month or six month period, we don't know the full effect, even this $2 trillion package that hopefully will get passed tomorrow is not a stimulus package. This is simply a Band-Aid. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we don't know where this whole thing's gonna go. You know, I, I know my wife came home tonight. They, you know, and we're not sure where we are. My question is, if we, if we did it over the next 12 months and we felt that six months in, things looked good and we wanted to then put the rest in, could we do that as opposed to committing, you know, I'm just, I'm just, I'm thinking it might be give us a little bit more time or, or is there a, a better argument? I know long term, it probably doesn't make a difference. Okay, we have, okay. We have another question, Mrs. Hill. So <clears throat> the decision we make today is not necessarily stuck in stone in the sense of how long it takes us to dollar, dollar cost average, correct, into the market. So if we saw a big adjustment one way or the other, we could leave that 50% in fixed income if we chose to or got it in faster, is that correct? 100% correct. So okay. who would guide us in that in that process would it be you watching it nancy are we going to depend on the um on our our um, facilitators how does how does that work i just want to know who's going to be watching that to make that decision because you got a lot on your plate nancy and i'm not mm -hmm. you're Let her answer. brilliant but i'm not sure this is necessarily your expertise so if, um, so part of the, the service structure, and, and again, Scott and, and Carrie can, the, our team is here to advise during the investment period, meaning um, if the, the, the idea is to dollar cost average over the next three or the next six months, what we would be doing is once a, once a month, setting up some time with Nancy to kind of give her market updates so that she can relay with the group on whether or not you want to move the money. This is, this is a projection for, you know, a plan. Now, it's not necessarily a mandatory trigger. You know, we're not going to set up a contract that says this amount has to move over every month. It's kind of a, a beginning way to make sure that your money, this $15 million, which the goal is to maximize the amount of return on, is invested in a way that we think is going to maximize return uh, in the short term. So getting all of the money into some point portfolio, the trust is what we think is going to be, uh, give you a higher rate of return than what you have in the county, putting you completely into a moderate growth portfolio puts you at a lot of exposure right now. Um, so what we're thinking is we want you to have upside and that really is in equities. So to have half of that with that upside, but have the other half in what we think is a lot more conservative being fixed income, and then evaluating this on a monthly basis over the next three to six months to see if the market's booming, then we start moving, right? Quicker and quicker. I mean, it could be if you saw the market move and you wanted to move everything in two months, you absolutely mm -hmm. could. That's, um, that was my question. That's the okay. great answer. Thank okay. you very much. But I want to make sure we got Dave yes. There. Okay, Dave, okay, yes. No, and, and, and that's my only concern is this is a unique year. It's an election yeah. year. Yeah. And Lord knows where it's going to go, with, mm -hmm. you know, in, in come November, December. So I'm just, cons only concern is usually after we get past election, then there's a bump in the market. So it would be nice to have timing there. Mm -hmm. but, I mean, as we saw the last three days, the market, and we haven't even passed the bill, but if someone doesn't want us to pass the bill tomorrow, and maybe you see the market go whips on back the other way. So. I think it makes sense long term for us to get at least 20%, maybe more into the market. Yeah. But I'm just, and I think the fixed income makes a lot more sense than what we're going to get at rates at the county. So mm -hmm. it's just a matter of the timing. And the concern I just have is what will the impact be? And I think there's just a lot of unknowns for us with what the virus goes and where, where uh, the selection thing you go. So I'm, I'm. So I guess the question back probably to Carrie would be. Let's say we, this is our game plan now. Like I like what you said. This is just a plan, but could that also be stretched out over nine months or a year? If as we are monitoring the market in three months, six months, and think that is a better alternative, um, is that still an option um, at that point? Uh, of course, um, and, and I'll let, let me give you Morgan Stanley's thoughts on this. And this may be a little different, but we've actually been kind of cautious on markets the last few years, not against markets, not underweight, 
but rather cautious simply because valuations were so high. Well, now we're actually, and I just sent Nancy a paper yesterday about this, we're actually increasing our expected rates of return on all asset classes for the next five to 10 years because valuations are now so low. So what we're specifically telling client is now's a good, a great time to start adding money into the market. I don't think you'd want to put it all in immediately. Um, I personally think it makes a lot of sense to set up a plan where 50% and then dollar cost average the rest over six months. And it's a plan that's set first of the month. This is what you do. But there obviously could be some things that might change that. Let's say in July, we retest the market lows. Well, if something like that, something dramatic like that happens, yeah. um, Jeffrey and I are probably going to be calling Nancy and say, hey, Nancy, this <laughs> might be a good entry point for the rest of that money. Mm -hmm. But short of that, usually a dollar cost average makes a lot of sense. But you also mentioned, can we extend it out to 12 months? Absolutely. Um, let's say you put half in and we're starting the dollar cost average and turns out we're not able to flatten the curve as they like to say. Mm -hmm. um, and then well, you might want to stretch it out a little further. That's not our base case. That's not our expectation, but you would certainly have that ability to do that. Uh, Meg had a question. Yes, Meg. Um, I have a question looking at it long term. So will we be getting guidance how frequently from our advisors? How frequently will you guys be communicating with Nancy after we have 100% of our funds theoretically settled into the package that or the program that we have selected? Absolutely. So maybe you can answer that question. Please. Or Scott or Carrie. I, I, I'm, so the, the reality is, is that um, I like Nancy, so I don't mind coming down the road um, and, and saying hello. We check in, we run performance reports once a quarter. So every okay. three months, we're benchmarking where all of our portfolios are meeting against the, the targeted returns and the expectations. When those, every three months, those reports, if they, they're telling a great story or a scary story, um, mm -hmm. we're, we're coming out to tell you the story every three months when we have that information. So I'm gonna be having calls. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be making movements every three months, right. uh, but every three months is when you will have formal reports from our team come out. Right. Additionally, uh, what Nancy is going to have access to is a system that she can in real time look into the performance of every investment every day if she wanted. Okay. Um, from a sanity standpoint, we, we don't recommend that, <laughs> right. but she will have access okay. to uh, real time information on, on performance. Um, Scott? A seat on mm -hmm. the board, doesn't she, don't we get one representative? You absolutely do. And in the paperwork you have tonight, uh, Nancy will have a seat on the Pension Stabilization Trust Board. Mm -hmm. um, and at that level, she will be apprised of all the larger um, decisions related to different funds and things included within the individual portfolios. And if they're switching things of that nature, Nancy will be aware um, of, of those decisions. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Uh -huh. Yes. Okay, we have another uh, on, question. On the, trust, on the trust agreement, there's a section that's on page four, actually, and it talks about um, you know, selection of the model portfolio, and it has on there that check one. If we do option one or option two, that doesn't really fit that particular. We thing. would do an agreement for, for each one. So if we did uh, option two, we would have two agreements, one to put 50% into the fixed, yeah. yes. and okay. then one... And then any time moving forward that we move things over, that's the agreement form we would use to move, I believe, okay. as well. Yeah. Yeah. All right. okay. Yep. Thank Good you. Catch. Great question. Thank you. Thank you. You can tell Mrs. Russell used to serve on the, wasn't it the STRS board? I was on the STRS board and I was <laughs> yeah. on the, oh, So yeah. she, she understands this well. I was on the investment well. committee, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. My own financial advisor used to pick my brain all the yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> Um, actually, Scott, did you have anything else on, on reporting and or access to uh, information? Yeah, Benefit Trust Company's got a, uh, a very nice website where you can go in 24-7 and see all the assets in your account. You can review all the transactions. There are monthly account statements that you can download, and there are monthly performance reports that you can download. And uh, so if you open the two accounts, you'll have access 
um, too. And we can set up as many of you as, as you like to be able to access these directly. And uh, you'll be able to go in whenever you like. The performance reports are issued on a monthly basis. So at the end of every month, it's usually about eight to 10 days after the end of the month, those performance reports are available. And I send out emails to uh, remind our clients to go out and look at them. Uh, but the but the online uh, resources too are very robust, and you can't always access those at any time um, from your desk or from your home. We uh, also um, have been very fortunate through this downturn to have the resources that we've had at Morgan Stanley to do regular conference calls to bring us all up to date, really on a weekly basis, as to what Morgan Stanley thinks. Is going on in the market, and these are the, the executives in New York that are that are doing these these conference calls. So, uh, again, you've got another great resource. Carrie do also does uh, interviews with the various managers of our mutual funds, and Carrie, you do that about once a month, right? Quarterly. Quarterly. Okay. So, so every quarter, you've got an opportunity to dial in and listen to what. Uh, what our mutual fund, different mutual fund managers are thinking about the stock market or the bond market and uh, get information that way. So there's there's a wealth of opportunities for all of you to stay abreast of, of the markets and, and, and you really need that in order to do your job properly. Um, you've, you've taken on quite a responsibility here and you need these resources so that you can uh, execute uh, your responsibilities properly. And we're here to make sure that you have all of those types of uh, informational and educational resources that you need. Thank you. Okay, are there any further questions from board members? Uh, Nancy, I know I have a resolution, yes. um, but do you need more specific direction on how we want the monies invested? Yes. I think we would like, the, the resolution itself doesn't dictate which, right. but it would be wise for us, I mm -hmm. think, and Just for the public direction. to hear your, yes. your direction on at least the two options that have been um, communicated do you, do you out. you have a recommendation? Does the staff have a recommendation? I believe our recommendation at this point is option two. Uh, if we absolutely think that the fixed income is going to be higher than the county treasury, to me it seems uh, like, like a no-brainer, and that's exactly even what, what Carrie was recommending um, at that point. That was the the thing I, I suddenly got in the in the meeting today. I, I wasn't thinking about the counter treasury that with actually we can beat the income. So why would we keep 50% there? Mm -hmm. um, so that would be our recommendation at this point. And, and one last question I have, and I think we talked about this when you came and did your presentation, Carrie. Thank you for all the information. Um, I'm really glad to see we're getting to the point where we're doing this, having a special board meeting. By putting this all together in the portfolio, giving the full 15 million, that gets us the best break point on, on the cost of investing, right? It's, it's um, Or is it it's the, the same, same if we give you same. half now and then half later? It's 30 basis points, yes. so it's the same. The Just, same, same no matter yeah. what. Okay. You remember that we had two different ones we were looking this at. Was, the Futurist, which was a different, but that had higher base points. Yes, um, right. There was more disclosures. Well, this is so, okay, so I just want to make sure if there was any difference in giving you. No. Making, so yeah. where's the break point? Okay, Great that's question. All. Thank you. Let's clarify. Okay. Okay, so do you want me to ask for consensus from the individual board members which plan they would prefer? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, which plan would you prefer? Um, I, Option two, the recommendation. Yep. Okay, and Mr. Boyer. Uh, I'd like to go with option two, I, although I would like to see a dollar cost average over a longer period. That's my own personal. Yeah, we can monitor that. Okay, and Mrs. Davison? Okay, and Mrs. Hill too? I'll go along with recommendation number two. Okay, and I also support recommendation number two. So I think I'm going to read the resolution because at one point it says I, the president, so. <laughs> uh, and I am actually gonna read the entire resolution because we are um, televised. And in case someone is really interested in what exactly we are uh, talking about, I want to, them to know. Uh, this is the resolution number 2019-2020-26 of the Los Alamitos Unified School District. Whereas the Board of Education, the Board of the Los Alamitos Unified School District employer, desires to invest fin funds irrevocably designated for the payment of its employee pension obligations through a trust in compliance with Section 115 of the Internal Revenue Code and the Governmental Accounting Standards Board Statement Number 68. 
and whereas Keenan and Associates and Benefit Trust Company have presented the California Public Entity Pension Stabilization Fund as an alternative for accomplishing the above objectives, and the board desires to engage Keenan and other necessary parties to assist in the process of investing funds in a trust for these approved objectives. Whereas the board has the authority and desire to appoint a representative to participate in the PST Board of Authority for the trust, which shall be appointed, terminated, or replaced by the employer at any time to serve at the pleasure of the board. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Los Alamitos Unified School District appoints Nancy Nguyen as a member of the PST Board of Authority. I do hereby certify that I am the president of the Board of Education of the employer and that the foregoing is true and correct copy of the resolutions of the board of the employer duly adopted and approved at a meeting that was duly called and held in accordance with all applicable provisions of the law and the bylaws of the employer on March 26, 2020. I further certify that the above resolution is presently full in force and effect and has not been amended or revoked. In witness thereof, the certificate has been executed on March 26, 2020. So I guess I need a second and then a roll call. I'll second. Thank you. Mrs. Russell? Aye. Mr. Boyer? Aye. Mrs. Catulli? Aye. Mrs. Davidson? Aye. And Mrs. Hill? Aye. Are we good? That is the end of our um, agenda. So as uh, Mrs. Russell alluded to, there is in part of the agenda packet that's also available on the, on the, the website for the community is the participation agreement mm -hmm. that now that the board has approved this, this really would be executed by Nancy, myself, and, and, and Elvia. Um, and we will just fill a new, we'll basically fill out two forms. So as Mrs. Russell alluded on the f page four, we would check um, one box for the fixed income, do a separate agreement um, from there. And then Nancy, can you just give what would be the timelines uh, for the board next? Yes, so in terms our, of yes, our goal is to get our, our, get, um, our account established um, tomorrow. So then um, I will be um, giving a copy to Jeffrey tonight so then he can go ahead and, um, and um, have the account be open tomorrow. And then you take a few days um, as, as well because we will have then to, from our county treasury to make, go ahead and then move the money over to their account. So that could be about maybe five Business days, we so that's believe that thinking, we'll yeah. uh, be able to get markets or funds in the market by next Wednesday. Wonderful. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, that's impressive. So uh, we do, yeah, we, we need some time to, to set up the accounts properly, especially because we'll be in two funds. Uh, but we do believe that we can get monies into the market by next Wednesday. Okay, great. Oh, smart that the board called the special board meeting tonight. Mm -hmm. Definitely thank was. Thank you, yeah. Carrie. Thank yeah. you, Scott. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Uh, Scott, Carrie, and Jeffrey. We really appreciate it. Uh, we do not have another scheduled board meeting until the 28th of April, which is the which was the main reason why we held this special special board meeting. Uh, we felt that the timing of this investment it was very important to do this much sooner than later, um, because we're just living in a very interesting economic time. And it's good if you have cash. Cash is king, right, Mr. Boyer? Yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, okay, sale, so can, um, nothing further, then I can go ahead and adjourn the meeting? Yep. Okay, thank you all so much. Mrs.